I'm going to show you a very efficient way of making one drop down list dependent on another even when you've got hundreds or even thousands of items in the dependent drop downs. If you've got very long lists of data and you want dependent drop down lists to link together, then you need a method that doesn't rely on creating separate lists for each of the first items that have been picked. So for example, here, we've got probably, I don't know what that is, maybe 20 different items, and then a huge amount of items underneath each one, depending on what you pick. In a previous video, I showed if you've got short lists that you can just create a separate list for each item that you pick in the first drop down to create your second list. But actually, this isn't going to work in this case because I've got so many items in the first list. This is my overview video. I'm going to go into a massive amount of detail in a subsequent video, which may already be out. If so, links in the description or perhaps on screen somewhere. So if you need that detail, click over, go into this link. I'm going to go through this in summary, showing basically how it's done. First off, we have a fixed list one. Now I'm just going to unhide the rows and hidden choices that we've got going on here. So we've got a fixed list one. This list is linked to a form control directly. So assuming that this is a completely fixed list that isn't going to change, if you want to be clever, it could link it to a dynamic range or something like that. But for now, we're keeping it simple. List one is fixed. So we pick from list one. That outputs to here. We then use an index match to pull back the name of the product we picked. Why are we doing that? Right. The reason we're doing that is because we are linking. We've also assigned a macro to this, which is a change macro macro. So whenever we select a new item on here, we've got a macro that's running. What's the macro doing? Right, we've got a pivot table. The macro is effectively filtering the pivot table. If I pick copiers and faxes, it's just picking copiers and faxes from here. And therefore it's giving us this list. That is in essence what we're doing here. Right, but there's a few more subtleties than that. So we're running this pivot table. This is a standard pivot table. It's just got the two items that we want in it. So we've got the filter is our first choice list. And then the we output what we want to appear in the second drop down list. In order to do this, like I said, I'll just show you the, uh, the macro we've assigned. Um, we should edit that. Yeah, very simple. You could just record this, record a new macro, can't put it in this book, bookcases, okay, stop that, go in here, look at what we've recorded. You can see we got this clear all filters, which is totally unnecessary code. This is the only code that matters. We're putting the word bookcases onto the current page of the product subcategory filter on the pivot table. So if I copy that in here, the only change I've actually made is that I've changed the word bookcases in the macro to a named range, right? What's that named range? Well, that name range is simply the product category choice. And I just named it up here. So you could just as easily link that to cell. Every time I change this, Macro runs, takes that value, puts it in the filter of this pivot table, which gives you this new list here. I now need that list to populate the second drop down. I need some this item count in here because unfortunately you can't. Well, I have not found a way. You have put it in the description in the comments. I mean, of linking a name range directly to a pivot table and having it move dynamically. So I think I had to effectively do this manually using an offset formula. 
So I've counted the number of items in the pivot table, just counted down from the row title there, right to the bottom of the spreadsheet. So it doesn't matter how many rows long it is, made sure I've removed the grand total from the, from the um, pivot table so you don't get like an additional blank uh, row or you don't get the word grand total appearing in, in things. And then I've created a named range, which is effectively starts at the top of that list, moves down one, doesn't move any columns, uses long list F4, which is effectively the number of rows. So it lists the number of rows and one column. Like I say, if you don't understand any of this, go to the detail video, go for it in a lot more detail. I just want to give you the essence of what how this is achieved. So we've got our products list there and then quite simply in this control I just link the input range to that name range give it an output on there so now this is just a dynamic name range which will change depending on whatever I pick up here how do I achieve this data or well, the chart is just literally linked straight to that data so that's not a problem and I'm sure you can um, you can format that however you choose but the way I've created the data is I've used the sumis formula some ifs right and I'm using the two criteria the one is the product choice the second is the customer segment so picking up sales on the orders table which is this data on the data sheet here customer segment is whatever that says product name is whatever that says similarly on the profit we've got the same say as well that i've linked the title of the chart i'll just put on there just literally go equals and linked it straight to the product which is slightly nice i think it's a nice chart nice touch sorry so that when you change the product you've got the name of the chart changing the other one that I think, and let's just see if I can find one here, make a, a loss making product. Mm, not hard to never find. Ah, here we go, loss making product. You can see that the down here, these are dropped down. So if I close up that pivot table, former axes, you can see that the, sorry, labels, I mean, are in position low, not the default would be next to axis. So position low and then you can put the the labels can be put outside end and it won't matter because these are shown low so that is it in a nutshell like i say if you want more detail on any of that i've got the detailed video go and have a look it takes you through we basically recreate this from a blank sheet completely blank sheet totally re recreate this start to finish um but i just want to give you the essence in this video because you know, you've got high Excel skills, you might be able to dive in and achieve this in the shortest amount of time. And I'm up for saving people time wherever I can. Right, so download the template, save you more time then, won't it? You can just get, put your own list in it, and put your own data in, you should be able to adapt it. No problem, no details required, straight down to your computer. So I hope you enjoyed that overview. Good luck with it. You got any queries or whatever, detailed video should be out soon. If it's not already, get those Excel skills up, task time's down. See you soon.